Neovim, no thank. Oh, sorry, wrong side. Neovim, no thank you. We're building our own text editor over here because honestly, it was just too much to configure Neovim. That's what I assume is going to happen here. All right, Noom, why I ultimately archiving it? A short retrospective on Neovim from the perspective of an Emacs re refugee and why I'm writing my own text editor. I always get confused to these kind of things. If you want to write your own text editor because you like it, I totally get that. But if you think you can write a better text editor, I'm not necessarily convinced on that aspect. You know what I mean? Like the years of thought and careful planning to build Neovim, like their APIs are extremely good. But if you want to build it because you love the idea of building your own, Knock, knock yourself out. Just knock yourself out. All right. Good evening, NeoVim community. I sincerely apologize for the long post. And for those who don't know me, and you probably don't, I am the maintainer of Nayum. Uh, what is this? There, let's see. These are your father's parenthesis. Elegant weapons of war. Or ele elegant weapons for a more civilized age. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is like a, a Chad. This is like a Chad Vim, right? Okay, cool. Close to my others. Okay. Nice. Opinionated but not stubborn. Oh, and Doom. Okay, so it's a Doom Max. It's kind of like a Doom Max. Uh, are the key codes going to be like a leader PF and things like that? All right, this is cool. I, I like that. I, I like when people try to do those things. I think it's kind of a fun challenge to build your own distribution. There's a lot of cool things about that. Originally, this post was going to be exactly that. A short note on why the repository was archived and where I'd be moving forward if someone needed to contact me. However, I figured I may as well turn it into a short retrospective on what makes Emacs so enticing, even with the numerous benefits NeoVim offers and where I feel Lua falls short. Ooh, interesting. Okay. A brief explanation of my credentials and edit editor history. I've been using Emacs uh, since release 25, damn, old hand, uh, and switched uh, to NeoVim during its uh, 05 beta period. Oh, that was a good time. 05 was a great time. Remember how many times we asked TJ, when is 05? When is 05? When is 05? Every day you asked when 05 was releasing, it added one day to 05. Those were fun times. When Lua was first introduced, since then I've contributed to NeoVim Core a fair bit along with helping uh, develop the NeoVide GUI along with a, f uh, a fair few plugins. Okay, so legitimately a pretty dang good programmer here. Oh, TJ's like, oh, I remember those times. Those times were awful. Okay, this is good. Okay, so, so obviously very talented guy here. As with many Emacs users, I fell in love with the speed and simplicity of NeoVim. I think this is fair. This is actually why I also went back to Vim ultimately after using Emacs for a while. It was nice. No GC pauses, minimal start time, asynchronous code features, and most importantly, a fairly quick LSP client. I love the simplicity of Lua and the flexibility of Lua JIT, but I was still chasing that Lisp bug, hence why I made Nayum. Okay, okay. Is this what happens if you use Lisp? Is Lisp one of those languages that permanently alters your physiology so that you can like literally never go back? Kind of like spice? Like once you consume enough spice, you technically can never leave Arrakis? Is this what happens? Like he left Arrakis and realized that he was going to die without the spice? Fair. It's fair. It's fair. Uh, Emacs isn't a text editor. It's a modern-day Lisp machine thinly disguised as a text editor. Whereas NeoVim starts off with an extensive C core and adds Lua bindings where needed. Emacs is almost always entirely built, almost, almost always, almost entirely built on Lisp and only uses C where absolutely necessary. Admittedly, that's caused a several... Uh, cause of several Emacs performance issues, but most of it gives way to Emacs' greatest feature. Anything is possible. That's respectable. I think that's respectable. I think I, I think I understand where he's coming from, which is he's sad about the performance and it's frustrating and he hates the GC pauses, but the ability to make it into anything you want is just something he likes. And obviously this is an editor nerd, right? Uh, if you're contributing to NeoVim Core, you're an editor nerd. And so... This is cool. I like that. Here, someone says to zoom in a little bit. I'll zoom in a little bit, baby. Ultimately, I wanted my text editor to be the primary environment I work in. Okay, so this is where I've, I've, recent, I've changed about two years ago uh, from trying to make my editor the primary thing versus trying to, make, uh, trying to make my desktop the primary thing and the editor is for when I'm editing. I've really kind of made this as a distinction lately. And I think I'm liking it. I think I'm going to continue down this road, but I get uh, Emacsers use Emacs for everything. As I did before in Emacs, uh, like uh, here's a good example. When I am using a Vim, if I want to go to a different project, I press uh, Control F. You can see up there. This actually executes right here. You may not notice what happens, but it actually opens up a new tab in Tmux. 
and then executes tmux sessionizer and then let's just say i go to htmx go it actually changes the directory i'm in and it starts a new tmux it, the tmux session a new session is detached and put here and all that good stuff so when i do another control f i can go back i can do control a capital l and i've gone back to my previous one so instead of using vim as my control for my project i use tmux as my control for my project because it also gives me the ability to have something running in here right I could have this nice little while, uh, you know, while true loop running in here, right? A server running right here, and then I can go back here, and I can be in a completely different project, doing my stuff here, go back, see what's happening here. That's how I have always kind of approached, uh, that's for the last two years, that's what I've been approaching my text editor kind of mindset, is that use Vim for what Vim does well. Use Tmux for what Tmux does well. Use Core Utils for what Core Utils do well. I don't know. It's just a thought process I've been going through, and I don't think either one's wrong, right? I think you can totally make Vim into a pretty versatile text editor, but I'm not sure if I want to do that. Uh, ultimately, I wanted my text editor to be the primary environment I work in, as I did before with Emacs. NeoVim isn't designed for that. You are beholden to what the core of the editor allows you to do. Fair. If you want the status line at the top of the editor, for example, you have to PR into core. This is also fair. I'd say this is fair feedback right here. With Emacs, you can arbitrarily place it uh, wherever you'd like, really. Having such dense control over the buffer system, which is largely implemented in Lisp, means that you can implement a CRDT, I, I don't know, system or a window manager around Emacs. The issue is further exacerbated by how plugins are may, uh, managed and the pitfalls of losing, using Lua. Oh, interesting. I like Lua. I think Lua is one of my favorite dynamic languages because of its limitations. I'm I, again. I'm in this renaissance phase right now, which is simplicity is better than uh, sophistication. I, I'll see where I land. C talk to me in a year how I feel about simplicity versus uh, complication. When I say that, Go versus Rust, right? Uh, one index. Okay, we can all agree one index. One index based indexing is 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 a mistake. Everything else fine, right? Lua is this simple language where the most complicated data structure is a table, and the table is in itself the only thing you really need to learn about. You want to learn a little bit about meta tabling, how you do these kind of fun magic functions and all that. And there you go. You've like learned the entirety of Lua and that is it. And I love that. I love that idea. One of the greatest feature plugin uh, features of plugin development in Lisp is the interactivity and introspectability of the language. While I and a few other plugins have attempted to emulate the con conversational software development experience of Emacs, notably Conjure by uh, Oilcal, thank you, it's only emulation. Once you pass that dot setup call to a plugin, it's over. Anything past that you're writing, at, you're at the whim of the plugin developer. Interesting. I, I guess I've never used Emacs big enough to understand, or enough with a deep enough understanding to understand what it means here. You know what I mean? Like, what does this mean here? It sounds kind of cool what he's trying to describe or what I'm picturing in my head. Uh, anything past that, you're at the whim of the developer. If they choose to add additional methods to the configuration or not, some will add API or ad additional commands, and many won't. Emacs just goes, hey, you want to know where this function comes from? Want to fuck it up later? Go, go ahead. Uh, if you do want to work in a scratch buffer, you can reload a plugin, but then you're throwing away the entire state of the plugin rather than modifying what you need. Mm, okay. Works fine for smaller tasks, but larger the plugin, the more you take, uh, the more hit you take. I think this also is probably driven from the fact that he's trying to make NeoVim into his operating system. This makes a lot more sense if you don't look at Vim as these like standalone individual editing experiences, but really just trying to make it into everything. Because then you do run into this where you try to reload a plugin or you reset up a plugin to work somewhere else or you redo something and you lose all that state that you needed. So when you go back, you have like a completely different experience and it effectively negates your experience you've already set up in one area. I can totally see this. Granted, you can mess around with meta tables instead of making a table uh, for configuration, allow users to update the configuration of a plugin at runtime. But when you're working against the, uh, the interests of the language. Okay. Additionally, NeoVim is somewhat, uh, somewhat TUI first. I love that. That's actually my favorite aspect. That's why I continue to use NeoVim. While there isn't anything technically stopping you from implementing proper proportional text and image support in NeoVim GUI, you'd have to PR that in. Uh, I don't actually care about proportional text. Call me crazy. I, I actually don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like, I, I, I'm just a simple man. You know what I mean? I don't need partial fonts, which is why I just use the basic terminal. Uh, I use whatever my default term is. 
uh, X term 256, right? Yeah, X term 256. I just use default and Tmux and I call it a day. I guess I don't really have any real need for anything. I don't really use ligatures, ligmatures. I don't use any of those things. I don't know. Maybe I'm just old. I could just be old. I could just be old. That's a fact. I could be just boomering it really hard. Admittedly, NeoVim has been making efforts on that front as well, multi-grid, but having an editor written with proportional text in mind from the get-go certainly helps. Over the past few months, I've tried as much as I can to engineer these features into NeoVim externally uh, by AB, using FFI plus Rust to bind into NeoVim's core and heavily modifying NeoVide, but the core isn't a uh, stable ABI, and therefore the plugin would break every version, uh, an issue that ne uh, NeoVim Oxy has run into. Okay, in fairness, that's on me. NeoVim wasn't built to work that way. Okay, fair. Uh, now it all comes down to why make a new editor? Why not just go back to Emacs and build on top of NeoVim? Elisp is an antiquated language with fundamental issues and high learning curve. Emacs is not graphically accelerated. TreeSitter is a start uh, to offering proper structural navigation and editing, but the query is not an incremental is not as incremental as the parsing, and it has a few flaws. You're attempting to rewrite TreeSitter? That's a bold move to rewrite an editor, which is extremely difficult but also to toss in tree sitter at the same time. I mean, tree sitter is a pretty amazing piece of software. Okay. I, I mean, this, this is a lot of coding. This is a commitment. This is like a genuine commitment. Uh, the way NeoVim Emacs handles text in general doesn't scale well with larger files. Fair. Uh, a modern rope uh, CRDT system would go a long way. Uh, but in that case, you can't use NeoVim as a library very effectively as you need to sync the state back and forth, a major bottleneck. Async threaded support is practically non-existent in Emacs, and threading support is still cumbersome in NeoVim. Uh, I'm not too sure about the threading support. I've used it a little bit. You have to do effectively a lift operation, right? And then somewhere you have to have the sync to async, uh, you know, thing, thing. This sounds like a, a mission statement of a man who recently found him or herself uh, without a day job, to be totally honest. Fair. This, I mean, it also sounds, I mean, it sounds like someone who's very passionate also just about text editors and editing environment in general, and obviously has spent a large portion of their, their time building these things. So like, could, oh, hi, I'm bored. <laughs> What are the chances your name is Hi, I'm Bored? Um, like, sounds like Hi, I'm Bored actually has a real chance at doing something well, right? They could. For all intents and purpose, there's a possibility that there could be a better version of Tree Sitter. I'm just curious, what would be the point of it? Like, could is the minor iteration really worth it? Are the query updating and all that a real bottleneck? bottleneck? It's a very similar story to how Helix got started. Okay, interesting. Interesting. You know what we say about Helix, right? All right, let's let the man cook. Okay. Uh, over, a, let's see. <laughs> over the coming months, I plan to develop a text editor based in months that takes uh, the pitfalls into mind and engineers around them. As much as a possible written in Lua slash Fennel, but uses Rust bindings where needed. Ropes and multi-buffers instead of conventional buffer representation, and the entire interface is written in Lua with bindings to the primitive graphics library. Uh, WGPU. Uh, ideally, instead of having command line, it would be Lua Fennel REPL where you can arbitrarily run functions. I mean, I love that he's, I, I love the fact that we're getting Lua in here. I think that that is extremely smart. I think Lua is really, honestly, it's, it's one of the best embedded languages out there. Uh, it's simple. It's very easy to learn. And you can just do a whole bunch in there. Honest, honestly. Honestly, it's really good. I'm not going to do Shelix. TJ, I'm shocked that you would even make that joke, TJ. Family man, TJ, making a D's nuts joke like this. Uh, uh, I'd consider my NeoVim projects stable at this point, and I am active in case any issue pops up, but that would be the end of it for features. If you do need help, the issue trackers are still available, and my contacts are listed on my GitHub profile. If someone would like to pick up the project, feel free to comment, and I'd, happy, I'd be happy to support repo permissions. NeoVim still... Uh, NeoVim is still an excellent text editor, especially if you want, just want to edit text. But for those of us who like to live at the limit, uh, it starts to show us its limits. 
Okay, fair. Thank you both the core team, plugin developers, and community for such an excellent editor over these past few years. Yeah, see, I see. I don't think I've ever had this problem because, again, I think I, I probably do. A, I have a fundamental different view of editing than I'm bored does, right? Which is that I don't. I treat ne every NeoVim instance as its own thing. I don't use the built-in terminal anymore. I really just try to run it as its own thing. Yeah, like, it'd be nice to be able to remove most of this stuff, right? I mean, I do like Zen mode, but, like, it's very hard to get rid of everything in NeoVim. It, I understand some of the requirements and some of the things that go along with it. So, not upset about it. I, I, get, I get where he's going because some people just want to go all in on making the greatest editor and go for it. Best of luck. I'd love to see it. And if I'm bored, if you, if you, if you do end up listening to this and you get, if, if you get somewhere with this editor, or even if you get a better tree uh, sitter, something like that, honestly, let me know. We can talk about it for 15 minutes. It'd be fun. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Hey, appreciate that. We take our text editors very seriously, Ajen. Yeah. <laughs> 